For 24-year-old Helen Truman, buying her first flat in Bristol with her boyfriend was one of life's milestones. But it's time for them to move on. We'd like to move out into sort of more the countryside area, buy a bigger house with a garden, have children, get married, the things that you'd like to do at my age. Helen's dad died recently and she needs to move closer to her mum. But selling has become a nightmare. After the Grenfell Tower disaster of 2017, new regulations were developed for all tall buildings with any kind of cladding, not just the specific type at Grenfell. Increasingly, mortgage lenders are asking for a fire inspection report by an expert if a buyer is to obtain a mortgage. Helen had a buyer earlier this year, but the sale fell through because there was no cladding certificate, called an EWS-1. This was not because the building was thought to pose any risk, it was simply because the development had cladding. It's unlike anything it, that either of us have had to deal with in our lives. It's all I think about. I think I eat, sleep, think about cladding. Um, it's just knowing because we can't sell it, we haven't got that freedom and control. Flammable cladding at Grenfell Tower was blamed for the rapid spread of fire, a disaster that killed 72 people. Now all buildings judged to be at risk have to have their own separate fire safety surveys and there are thought to be more than half a million of these in the UK. But the Chartered Association of Building Engineers told Newsnight there are just two to three hundred professional fire engineers capable or qualified to do this kind of survey work. This is one. Jamie Davis is an experienced fire engineer. We showed him Helen's building. I suppose the simple question is, is it dangerous or is it not dangerous? It's not a question you can easily answer from a photograph, unfortunately. Um, we would need further information. We'd need to understand uh, the actual construction of the external wall. Jamie Davis thinks some mortgage lenders might be asking for the cladding safety form, the EWS-1, unnecessarily. Do you think the lenders are being unduly cautious about this? We've heard reports of them even insisting on the EWS-1 form to be filled in for terraced houses, for example. I think the original intention of the form uh, was good. It was well intended, but in my experience, it is being interpreted in a way that it's almost a tick box to, to achieve uh, a mortgage effectively. Many properties that need checking are partly owned and managed by housing associations. All of the work that we, do we spoke to the body that represents housing associations. It believes a crisis is looming and it needs urgent attention from the government. This could be a massive problem. It could potentially be a big problem and what we're seeing is an increase in the number of requests for additional information from mortgage providers as more people try to sell their properties. The only way really that it's going to be resolved is with additional support from government in the form of government funding. So this is a fast emerging issue which could affect hundreds of thousands of people. Some leaseholders have set up online campaign groups. They say 600,000 to 900,000 people could be affected. I think as people go to remortgage or go to move, I think people will realise how much it's going to affect them. Um, I think a lot of people don't realise it affects them yet. It's, it's sort of coming out now. You're putting quite a brave face on this, but I can imagine this has been amazingly stressful. It's the unknown, that we have no control. We can't make our own decisions about our lives. We can't worry about financial burden for maybe like 10, 20 years to come because we can't sell it and we don't know what's gonna happen with the property. Um, we just sort of, we're sort of stuck and we can't move on with our lives. Clearly, lessons from Grenville must be learned, but hundreds of thousands of leaseholders could be trapped, unable to sell their homes. Richard Watson reporting. We asked the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government for a response to his piece. A spokesman told us 
We do not support a blanket approach to the use of the EWS1 forms and where owners are able to demonstrate their buildings are safe using other equivalent evidence, we would encourage lenders to accept that for valuation purposes. They said that they're providing £1.6 billion to speed up the removal of unsafe cladding and protect leaseholders from significant remediation costs and said building owners must take swift action to remediate their buildings. So joining us now are Emma Byrne, who lives in an affected block of flats. She's also a writer for The Spectator and Conservative MP Sir Peter Bottomley, who is co-chair of the all-party parliamentary group on leasehold reform. Welcome to you both. Emma, look, let's start with you. Um, you live in one of these affected buildings. For viewers who perhaps just don't get this, What's to stop you just selling up and, and leaving? Everything. Um, I currently live in a, um, a one-bed shared ownership flat, which does not yet have this form. Um, it means that I absolutely can't sell. I can't remortgage my property as well. I am effectively trapped until I get this form. Right. And presumably any buyer who you might want to interest in your flat... Yeah is not going to be able to get a mortgage. Absolutely. I mean, that's already happening to neighbours of mine. I've, uh, a neighbour of mine has already bought another home outside London. Um, that's gone through absolutely fine. But his buyer's mortgage has failed. So ultimately, he's now paying two mortgages. Right. Well, what does that do to people like you and, and your neighbours? I mean, to your life, to your, to your plans, in a sense, your life plans? I can't emphasise how devastating it is, actually. Um, it's the uncertainty, the idea that you, especially with so many unknowns happening at the moment with COVID and the, the, there's, there's nowhere to turn, I'm not going to be able to sell my property, and, but also the idea that I have cladding on my building that I'm, I don't know if it's safe yet. I still have to have this test, I still have to have an invasive survey. It keeps you awake at night, you can never fully concentrate. Um, it, it's pretty devastating. Right. Well, let's bring in Sir Peter Bottomley. I mean, you've heard about the problems here from, from people living like Emirate with this. Uh, do you think this is essentially a safety problem as it appears on the surface to be? Or is it, or is it about bureaucracy and, uh, and procedure, particularly in the mortgage industry? It, it's all three, but it's also slavery. People like Emma can't, they can't take the jobs they want. They're stuck. And government, besides sing and you should make sure that ends. I would say, I say to owners, Emma is a leaseholder rather than an owner, they have responsibility with the finance industry, the mortgage lenders, and with the surveyor, and sort this out very, very... Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, you, your sound is a little intermittent. I'll ask you another question in the hope that it clears up. Uh, uh, but if it doesn't, well, well, we'll cut away. We'll cut back to Emma for a, bit, for a moment there. Um, do you have any sense, Peter Bottomley, how many people are actually in this situation? I think that the number of people involved is between 600,000 and a million. I think that the number of surveyors who can do this work who are insured is probably between 300 or whatever. I think that the government have known about the problem since January of this year, and they have so far not found the way of getting it solved. The owners, that's the landlords, and the surveyors and the insurance companies and the mortgage companies have the responsibility to solve this for the near a million people who may be affected now or in the very near future. Well, what about the point made in the government statement to us that uh, because of this issue, as, as you said, about the limited number of surveyors and the EWS1 form, that freeholders can go for an equivalent form of safety certification, that they can, they can take the initiative. Is that possible, do you think? It's possible. The all-party group, which I co-chair with members of other parties and with the help of the campaign charity Leasehold Knowledge Partnership and the National Leasehold Campaign and others, can bring people together. But it shouldn't be left to us. The government can make up for what hasn't happened yet, which is have a round table and treat this as seriously as they treated the flood insurance where something was brought in. And I add another point. Where people clearly need to sell and they'll not be able to get the market price because of this problem, I think government should set up a trust or an agency, the way they did with the banks, to buy the properties. And when the procedural problems, the EWS1, which is the external fire review uh, system, 
and BS8414 and the other British standard are resolved, they can sell them at market price, but do not leave ordinary innocent people at the bottom of the housing pile, left stuck, enslaved to homes which may not be safe and are presently unsaleable. OK, let me put a couple of those points to Emma then. Does that sound like a good plan to you, the one that Peter Bottomley uh, just sketched out, in which effectively there's a, there's a government guarantee scheme on this? Um, it's an interesting idea. I mean, there, there are kind of twofold problems with um, what's happening at the moment, which is that you have a, a series of people who are trapped in homes, which are actually safe as well, because mortgage lenders are asking about um, for guarantees of buildings that don't have cladding, etc. But you also have the other group of us who do have dangerous buildings, it's potentially dangerous items on their building. And this is going to take years potentially to resolve. It's not like you get the form and it ends. This could potentially be like years and years of remedial work, extra costs, and the financial hit that that's going to bring to us as well. What about the point in that government statement, look, your freeholder can take the initiative, they don't have to have this form, the external wall form that was talked about in Richard's film. Mm. They can get an equivalent. Do you think your freeholder could be doing more to resolve this? Um, they, so my freeholder is my housing association. They, the communication, is lax, but then they have a lot of buildings that are being covered with this. Um, from my understanding, it's the mortgage companies who are effectively reading this, reading the forms wrong, and insisting on criteria that the government says they shouldn't be dealing with. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Peter Bosley, let, let me just bring it back to you finally, because because we're almost uh, out of time now. Um, in terms of, of setting out a sort of road map, it's clearly a, a bit of a Gordian knot of a problem between inspection, mortgage lenders, gov possible government guarantees. What's your starting point for getting out of this mess? That people should take up what the all-party group, with the help of Lisa and Norris Partnership, have been campaigning for, get people together. Each of the boards of the banks and the building societies should say, our corporate government's responsibility is to solve this. The Royal Charles Surveyors should solve it. The insurance companies who look after the surveyors' professional insurance should solve it. And government, they've helped a lot with the 1.6 billion, but they need to solve this problem too to get the housing market moving. It's only fair, it's necessary, and it's urgent. Peter Bottomley, Emma Byrne, thank you both very much.